Another great episode of PFREI. I'm your host, Fuquan Bilal. Oh, man, I'm so excited for this interview today. First time on the show, Michael Fitzgerald. Oh, man, Gideon Properties. Uh, this guy, we're in a mastermind together, by the way. And this guy always comes with it, full of energy. It's always good to, when you greet people, they greet you with a smile. You could just, the energy just ooze out of this guy. I just, I just love being around him, always full of positivity, always you know, giving me the jewels and nuggets. And and uh, he's just also actually Mr. Credibility is his name. <laughs> so, so, Mike, let's start off just to give a little background. Um, I usually only ask one question of the show and I, I'll get to that question, but let the audience get to know you. Talk about your background and how you guys started uh, with real estate investing. Okay. So when I was 20 years old, and I'm 39 right now. I had saved up some money. Um, you know, I'd, I'd always been a hard worker, and I, I had um, between ten and twenty thousand dollars saved up. And I called a rent to own ad in the newspaper. And when I called the rent to own ad, the investor on another line said, "You sound like you make a better real estate investor than renting to own my house." So I was. Uh, I remember driving down Route 40 at the time, and he told me that I could buy real estate, no money down, creatively. And I asked him what he meant. He said, you can buy real estate and not bring any of your own money to the table. And he, and he told me to go to local real estate investor associations. So these were like an hour away. I started driving to the different RIAs and I learned that you could buy real estate, no money down. My, my very first deal was a division of proceeds. Then I started doing um, uh, subject to the existing mortgage where I moved the property in my name, but it just, uh, the title insurance ex excludes um, the the first mortgage that I, that I take over. So I did a bunch of creative deals. And then I started raising money from private investors um, in 2006. March makes uh, 19 years. It's uh, it's been a journey. Um, you said Mr. Credibility. You know, I started out with none, and then one thing led to another. Um, I, I do have uh, qu quite quite a few. Uh, uh, I'm I'm award winning with stuff like that. I've I've worked with the local government. I've I've worked with uh, I'm on the executive committee for the Economic Development Commission. I've done game-changing projects in downtown. Um, right now, we're doing 43 luxury units in Hagerstown. But I did it all from a guy that started in a one-bedroom apartment with a dream. And um, I do have a lot of references, such as bank presidents, private investors, and different uh, letters I can provide. Thank wow. you for your yeah. kindness. And by the way, I can't help but smile when I walk up to you because you're always such a nice guy. It's always good to talk to you. I appreciate it, man. And congratulations on your 19 years. I know it's... it's um, you know, peaks and valleys. I know it's been a, a long uh, journey, a long process, and I'm pretty sure you you probably feel like you're just getting started, right? As, as when you learn more, it's like, wow, it's, it's it's never enough. That's one thing I like about real estate. Uh, it's all different. It's multifaceted. And then you just never know everything, right? It's always something new that you can learn. So, you know, I, the question I usually ask the guests is, why are you passionate for real estate investments? Well, the, the passion started out for different reasons. Like when I started, I just wanted to, um, you know, be able to have a good life and not work three jobs like, like my dad did. My dad, great guy, hard worker. Um, and one of my biggest accomplishments is uh, three years in. So about 14 years ago, 15 years ago, um, I was able to buy uh, my childhood home back. Um, that my parents had to move out of and I moved them back in it and um, I've never charged them a dime. I also was able to help my parents. I'm able to help my family. Um, I'm able to help the community. Um, you know, so really, and now after all these years, I started as a guy in a one bedroom apartment. I happened to meet like a great mentor that had a company of 400 people, this guy by the name of Richard Greenwald, and he had sold it in 1989. And he said, Mike, when he came to my one bedroom apartment, he saw my shoebox full of receipts and he said, Mike, you need a girl Friday. You need a bookkeeper. And for about the first five years of my business, he was in my office every single week and that he wasn't in Florida. And when the market dropped, he gave me great advice. I already had a couple creative deals at the time and four rehabs going yeah. on. He said, Mike, I would cut it out like a cancer and pay everybody back their full interest. So I didn't know how I was going to do that at the time, but I had done a creative deal on the farm where I own a farmhouse and a farm where I had done a deal to subdivide part or, part or, or all of it and sell it towards my purchase price and no money down. It was actually my third deal going in, but my 17th deal to close. And when I did that, I had netted around a million dollars in equity. So I, I borrowed 675000 on this farm. I paid the farmer off. 
I paid all my losses. I was down to like $20,000. And within six months, that farmhouse went, um, went down in value. And then the one property I had kept that I, that I had from a bank, it went down in value. So I'll, I'll share a story about, about that. I, um, I had a negative $300,000 net worth because I paid everything. Local banks started working with me in a year where I was able to buy rentals. And, uh, by 2010, I had around 200 rental units right now wow. with partnership. I have 800 and um, I took that negative two hundred thousand dollar or four hundred thousand dollar net worth to to a pretty good level within three years by doing what I said I was going to do, taking my own loss, and through the years owning assets. Anytime anything ever, anytime I ever have a hurdle, I sell some of the assets because the, the equity is um, good. But before I had equity, I did the right thing. Now I do the right thing, and um, you know I have four main private lenders for over a decade. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's been good right now. We're getting into bigger deals and we're doing more. I've been able to go from what was a hub and spoke business model to a real business. So I got a COO, I've got 22 great employees. So now where I used to see all the properties that got picked up, I, I see them, but I see them on paper and, and these guys are doing very, very good. But because we're doing a higher level business and because I'm also in bigger deals like the Catalyst Project and apartment complexes, which have done great for me, um, we're definitely looking to, um, to find people where we can pay 10 to 12 percent on the money secured by real estate. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we refinance, rinse and repeat. Yeah, thanks for sharing it, uh, your journey and, and experience. Now, your strategy is more single family. You say you, you guys are making a transition to... Um, I guess, level up on your asset strategy or, or what are you guys doing? Because uh, you said you had a portfolio of 800. Those are pretty much single families, maybe a couple of multi mixed in there. Is that the current strategy? C -c Correct. In, in the multifamily, like for example, we bought a portfolio with some guys in Ohio and I do a lot in my local market, but it was a really good portfolio. It had, um, it had a significant amount of equity. So we have three complexes in there, but right now, um, we had with second lien lenders, we're actually going to take it to a finance strategy of institutional and hold them long term and do one more second lien along the way to lower my interest. So I'm keeping those. And then I have a lot of single families we buy and sell as well. So I have three guys that all they're doing is cold calling people to buy houses. And we generally spend thirty to 50000 a month in marketing. And we, we, we end up buying a lot of really good real estate. So we borrow on that and then we borrow on real estate we want to buy. And then we borrow on apartments. It's, it's just a real variety. Um, but I, that's why I have a COO. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, man, how is this market affecting your business plan and your strategy? Right. Because interest rates are up. Um, a lot of people are on pause waiting for more blood in the street. Um, guys like us waiting uh, to get better deals, better opportunities, but still there's guys like us who's, who's struggling, um, and, and the disposition side. So what are some of the things that you notice that, I mean, you've been in the business 19 years, so you've been through, um, oh, eight, you kind of yeah. been through that before. Oh, so yeah, but yeah. I'm pretty That's sure, um, we, like I always tell people, I'm not a hundred percent bulletproof, but going through oh, eight really taught me life lessons and helped me to go through like the COVID uh, and, and that whole era that we went through and everything else. What are, how is it affecting your business and what are some of the things that you and your team are doing to try to navigate? Um, so I'm kind of like, I'm kind of the same way. Real estate, when you're in a long term, it is about pivoting. And when the market change, what you do changes. So, you know, in my example of 0708, um, that, that duplex I had, or that I told you I had 165 on, went down in value to 45. I held it. I refinanced it a year ago. I had owed 150 or something. It was down to um, it was down to like 30 grand, and it was worth 150 again. So what I really what I realized about real estate is you have slowdown periods, and of course you have to be able to to know what to do to to change in those periods. Um, wholesale fees changed at the time, but they didn't really. You just bought property lower. So if property goes down in value, you have to get it at a less expensive cost. So you still have that 30% margin. You can still do, do deals in a tough market. You may not be able to sell them to hedge funds and you may not have the easy way to do it. 
But every market takes, you know, you got to convert and you got to figure out how to do it. When COVID happened, I sold off around 100 units to pay for it. But but I had it. If I didn't have it, I would have I would have done everything I can to increase my wholesales, increase my my buy and sells. Because when you renovate property and you sell it, we sold probably 100 flips in a bad market but they just didn't sell for what they did in the good market. It takes not panicking. It takes re-strategizing planning and figuring out the best income centers for today's market. It's going to keep your business moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Great, great, great. Um, so I would say now, as far as from an investor standpoint, there's a lot of investors that are on the sideline, right? The private investors I'm talking about that are on the sideline waiting to see where things are going to go. And I always say, you know, with with inflation and everything going on, that money on the sideline, they're losing money. I would say losing about 30% just by sitting on that money and not letting it grow at 10, 12%. What is your take on that? There's a lot of investors, uh, uh, passive investors that are on pause. Um, I don't know if you're, you're seeing any of that in your market, but we're seeing a lot of that. And there's a lot of talk about that. And I know a lot of investors that, you know, invest heavily in alternative assets and they're just on pause waiting for um, Q3 to see what's going to happen for those great opportunities that are going to be out there. What's your take on that? Um, um, investors that's on pause. The best opportunities are in a bad market. That's where I made the most wealth. So I picked up a couple hundred rentals in a bad market. And, you know, when I wanted to switch from a hub and spoke model to having, you know, leaders and a, and a COO, that was trial and error. And of course, it slowed down my income, but I, I was able to sell some rentals. Um, I would say to experienced guys and or guys that are showing how to make money, that you're safe and you have you have the loan on you know protected by the asset. Um, I, I would say you're missing opportunity because for a guy like me, this market's more opportunity to buy because there's not all the news about how good the market is. And, you know, we're getting deals where we're meeting people's needs, winning, they're winning. Uh, we're having people bring us deals. And, um, you, you know, I, I think it's any market is a good market invest to invest if you have the right operator. And I think there's a lot of good operators out there. Um, you know, um, you have plenty, Fuquan, you have plenty of um, great operators, you know, because you're in some of the number one real estate masterminds in the country, as am I. Um, lending to a good operator and more importantly, looking at the asset and seeing there's equity and seeing there's a plan A and plan B, I think having money on the sidelines um, to an investor wouldn't make sense to me. Yeah, they just not Sorry for the long like this, answer, right? I, sorry for the long winded answer. I just I didn't want to I didn't want to just say what I thought and not put an explanation behind it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's all good. It's just that they're just not in the right circles. They just don't have the right um, people around them to kind of educate them on what's happening in this market because some people who've who've come from the traditional market from stocks and may have lost some money there some money in bitcoin now coming over to alternative assets they're pretty much gun shy so what we what we've been doing for those new investors who um got to know us got to like us and trying to build that trust with us is really just providing education right providing them as much education as as we can to uh, take the fear away so they'll they'll know how operators like us execute in this market what do we look for how do we stress test our assets um, and things that we do um, to keep investors educated to reduce that fear what are, what, are, what are some of the biggest challenges that you have right now in your business this is a question that I often ask um, because we all have challenges, you know, it's always people, processes, and systems. <laughs> so you know, one of those three, what are, yeah. what are some of the things that you're facing in your business that you're like, holy crap, you know, that you and your CEO is constantly working on trying to make better. It can always be better, right? So I, I've got a great COO, but it, it's actually what opportunities are we going to take? Because in some of these masterminds, I've become known as kind of like a guy that understands breaking down big deals. So we're, we're brought opportunities. And I already have two, two out-of-state partnerships, good partnerships, one really good. And I'm, um, I'm debating, we're, we're debating Grove, where we want to grow because we got such a good thing going with buy-selling. I got a catalyst project in the city of Hagerstown that 
the government, state, city, federal um, is putting $3.1 million in and our cash equivalents. And it's looking like we're going to get a, a loan from the state of $2.5 million. And we're helping so much. So since we've done that, over 100 other projects have been, um, over 100 other apartments, residential luxury have been announced. Um, and we're really excited because to bring that level of income downtown for down, downtown spending helps the tax base, helps the community, and um, it, it kind of causes a chain effect. So I would say where we want to grow at. Do I want to grow more on big deals around here? You know, Do we want to do more rehabs, um, growth? The second thing is money used to always – be easy because I had three million in bank line of credits and five million in private investors. And since we've started doing some of these bigger deals, now we tie bigger money up, which are which our current investors like. They do really well on, um, and we're doing more. So we're 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 at we're, we're raising money again for the first time in five or six years. And you're right with the market. That's been a little bit of a challenge. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm going to say what I can do that'll that'll help with that. Um, and I would say the third thing, doing the best I can for my, my COO, my chief operating officer to uh, secede. You know, I always want to be on top of that. Those are three things I, I work on. Um, as far as money from an investor, I would look at their developer property schedule. That means look at what they own and look at what the properties are worth. You know, check into those properties, you know, ch check the values, ask them for comps on a couple. And I'd look at their personal financial statement and see how they're situated and what their wealth is. Because if you're lending to somebody that has significant funds um, in wealth, you know, um, and they have a good record, um, I just don't see why not. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm also the guy that borrows money and, uh, it, it pays interest. You know, we're buying a um, three unit this week, for example. We're borrowing 210 from a private investor, but the three units worth 330. Two of the units are already rented. We're putting 40 grand into the apartment complex, a lot of which on the outside in the hallway. And in one unit, we're fully doing, and it'll be worth 330. We're borrowing 210. We'll refinance it within eight months. We'll, we'll, we'll borrow the money for eight months. We'll pay the private investor um, 10 percent, maybe twelve percent on their money. I'll personally guarantee it. The company will guarantee it. it'll be closed with a title company, title insurance, lenders insurance. Um, so I mean, when you're on deals like that that have equity protection and you have an experienced operator that can give you, you know, their their full picture, then I think you're pretty safe. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I always appreciate talking to you, man. I just I learn a bunch. How can people get in contact with you, reach out to you? What do you got going? How are you helping people? Any any contact information you want to drop? Any social media? Yeah. So, you know, I can give you my social media. It's um, I'll give you my Instagram, but then I'll also give you my email. And if anybody wants to email me that listens to the podcast, I'll also, I'll, I'll also in include Vaquan on the on the email that way you can see the deal you can look at what what's going on that way if, you, you know if, if if you guys are interested uh my my instagram is mike the number two the t-h-e fits f-i-t-z so mike the number two the fits but my professional email is mike m-i-k-e at gideon g-i-d-e-o-n prop p-r-o-p dot com so that's mike at that symbol, Gideon, G I D E O N, prop, P R O P dot com. Awesome. And I got, Mike, I got a lot of good people, um, and we'll get, we'll get back to you right away. Awesome. Mike Fitzgerald from Gideon Properties. Oh, man, this was really good. Um, any closing thoughts, sir? I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for the time. Um, you know, you, I, I'd love to have you up to Hagerstown. I'd love to show you what's going on in the city. You're invited to, um, you're invited to my home. This is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This the mansion. No, no, this is the library, for example. Yeah, um, a really big businessman used to live here. Six to seven hundred employees. It's an honor to live in this house. I actually bought his personal library behind me. I do some of my own books. Um, you know, I try to keep it balanced. I try to read. I try to work out. I try to stay physically fit. I try to spend time with family. And um, you know, I I have people. I'm I could sell everything right now, but. I have such good people and leaders that work for me that I, and I don't know what I do. I enjoy doing this. Um, 
And um, I love the relationships I, I've made throughout the years. And one of them is uh, yours. And I, I really appreciate your time. I, I respect you. Every time I have a conversation with you, I, I learn something. You're constantly up top of what's going on. So uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you for going to the show. Another great episode of PFREI. I'm your host, Fuquan Bilal, Passion for Real Estate Investments. If you guys catch us on YouTube, be sure to like and share us and catch us on all the other social media platforms. This was another great episode. Thanks. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's my pleasure. It was I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Looking forward to you coming to Hagerstown.